All right, so we are already in the third episode of the Haunted India podcast, and the podcast fever is already getting us. And uh, we just recorded the second episode today, and we are again in front of the mic recording for you people. And if you have not subscribed to us yet, I have no idea what you are doing because I'm pretty sure you are missing many of the real stuff. So go ahead, follow us on iTunes, subscribe on us on YouTube and SoundCloud because we are everywhere. And on the third episode of the Haunted India podcast, we have an amazing guest right from Australia. So yes, our third episode, and we already have international guests coming to us. So you can imagine the popularity we already have. So, so uh, this personality, she has 10.8k on Instagram and 40,000 subscribers on YouTube, and she has been traveling for the last year. And I'm pretty sure she has traveled more than 25 countries investigating the paranormal. And now she is in our country, India, and we have not let down our reputation by asking her for a selfie. <laughs> and uh, yeah, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome. Amy to India and also to the Haunted India podcast. Welcome, Amy. How are you? I'm very well. Thank you guys so much for having me on. I'm really excited to, this is my first podcast ever, so I'm super excited about that. I'm excited to be here with you guys and excited to be here in India. And I've already found a lot of haunted, spooky places to explore and yeah. Let me uh, interrupt you. So you, uh, you are in India for the first time. First time ever, first time. yeah. So you're in India for the first time and you are already in the Haunted India podcast. How are you feeling? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That was cheeky. That was cheeky. Don't mind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you want to start or should I? No, you, you carry on. No, so uh, Amy, you know, uh, when I saw your photographs on Instagram, I really like the feed that you have on Instagram and let alone leave the... Uh, content that you put on YouTube. I am a big fan of the content, the shots, the way you take the stories, how you show the place and the historical um, you know, importance of the places. That is really amazing. It's absolutely amazing. It's different yes. and you know, I think people should be more of what you are doing. But uh, I'll just start off my question uh, by asking that uh, you have been traveling for the past one year. Yeah, so I've, I'm originally from Adelaide, South Australia, mm -hmm. and I left a couple of years ago. So I've spent uh, three years in San Francisco, and then almost, we're coming up on almost a year traveling. We left San Francisco to travel, so it's almost been a year on the road with uh, no like home base or anything. We just keep going and seeing new sites and new cultures and new countries so that's very yeah. exciting so yeah almost a year on the road but maybe almost four years away from home so it's been a while <laughs> so before we actually get to the paranormal i would like to ask you how is india treating you so far india's india's been a crazy ride so we mm. were just in uh <laughs> europe for a long time and it's very very different so we come to india and we started in delhi and Delhi is very intense, there's a lot of people, a lot of traffic, and the food is different, the culture is different, but it's all been a lot of fun, it's been very uh, interesting to see new and different things, and meeting a lot of people, people have been very friendly and opening and wanting to share their culture and, mm -hmm. you know, uh, teach us many, many things about India, so it's mm -hmm. been a big learning curve uh, as well, but... Yeah, it's been it's been really good so no, far. So could, good. Uh, you, uh, you know, the question that I was about to ask was, what you are doing, Amy, is one of our dreams. You know, traveling the world, investigating the paranormal. Absolutely. I mean, we have that's how you know it's always you know that we have to travel the world, investigate the paranormal, and now you are right in front of us doing the same. <laughs> you know, so my question <laughs> is, what uh, inspired you, or what is your inspiration when you decided to travel the world? when you decided to go to each uh, haunted location the country has to offer and investigate the paranormal. What was your inspiration? What made you do or take this weird step of touring the world? So I think my uh, goals and aspirations of travel have kind of morphed and changed. I always wanted to travel and see the world and that was a big part of leaving Australia and moving to the United States was to see a bit more. And then when we got to the States, I had my first, I had always been interested in it, but I had my first paranormal experience, so to say, even though I'm still skeptical about everything. But 
from there, it kind of triggered me to start blending the paranormal with travel. Mm -hmm. So when we would travel, I would look up haunted places and their backstories, and I love the history. So that kind of started guiding how we would travel in the States. And then we went to all these places and then it just, it grew into a blog, it grew into a YouTube channel. And there's a lot of support and interest behind what I'm doing, which is fantastic. And I want to keep growing that community and like interacting with more people like you guys and mm -hmm. just learning and uh, getting that different kind of knowledge from all over the world, not just one country or one place. Mm -hmm. So I think that's kind of how it started and then I always wanted to do a big trip for at least a year backpacking and then it just kind of turned into this big haunted trip <laughs> which is great it's so fun. I'm pretty sure uh, uh, now every uh, how do you say every uh, peak has its slow you know uh, it's like the, that's how they balance each other so when you decided to do this very thing I'm pretty sure you might have faced some problems some difficulties while doing that so is there anything that you'd like to share if it is not personal enough? For sure. I think what I was doing, I had a few people that didn't agree with it. Um, so one person that I talk about, my grandma actually was, oh, Amy, I don't want you going out chasing ghosts and demons mm -hmm. and it's dangerous and you shouldn't be doing that. Yes, and I then... guess that's pretty similar. <laughs> anyway, because I have had the same thing. That, oh, don't do that my mom has been freaking out oh really <laughs> Absolutely. I, I, I hope for you is similar with me because I've actually kind of turned my grandma's views and opinions so she started reading my writing and watching uh, the videos that I've been creating and she's mm -hmm. learned that mm -hmm. there's a lot more to it than just oh I watched that really scary movie mm -hmm. you know back when I was a teenager and it's kind of scarred me that ghosts will really hurt you yeah. so I think that she's learned and like grown and now she sees what I'm actually doing and she's probably one of my biggest fans she <laughs> called me the other okay. week and she said I stayed up till midnight watching one of your videos <laughs> <laughs> Nanny, that's very late for you. So I think it's pretty <laughs> common uh, now that you are from Australia and now that your granny is reacting or behaving the same way our parents do because like when she shared that her mother is worried, same goes for my parents. So but now I'm 22 so when I began I was only 17 uh, or 18 and for a kid who is born in India investigating the paranormal at the age of 16, 17 is a weird stuff. It's a it's it's a big deal. <laughs> big deal. You know? uh, and I've seen videos uh, out there in the US and Europe where people take uh, kids to haunted tours. And you know, I've seen the photographs. For me, there's a bit of concern, but I also see how open mind they are regarding the kids to see the paranormal and experience it. But here, yeah, it's a different thing. You know, if yeah, it's mainly because uh, what they think and what they feel that you know what paranormal is is totally different than what it actually is. So it's more of a fear that you know, fear and like also the, the misconception. The that misconceptions. We have. Yes. You say you are a ghost hunter or you are a paranormal investigator. People will ask this very question. Oh, so you put ghost in bottle? That's what you do. That's yeah. What, yeah. yeah. Then, like a genie inside. Yeah. That's the only uh, common um, conception they have related to ghost and investigating the paranormal. So uh, it's pretty common, and I, I'm so glad that there are people around the world who are uh, facing the same thing because it gives us the motivation to go to keep through going. it, keep to keep going, going actually. Yes. Basically. Well, you get to teach people a lot as well, and then they'll they'll they, learn. It and is necessary. I, exactly. I am actually strangely skeptic, a skeptic of the paranormal. I really want to believe and I've had these strange experiences that I can't explain, but I know that uh, if ghosts do exist, I don't think they're all necessarily negative yeah. Absolutely. and they're not evil if, yes. if um, you know, uh, people pass on like a relative mm -hmm. or someone is was once human and is now trapped in a house as a ghost you know if it all is real that person is still likely just a person, person yeah, you know exactly. so I, I i don't think that it's anything to be overly scared of you know and we make sure that uh like in english uh we uh it's, it's pretty easy to talk in english during investigation but in hindi 
we make sure that we are showing the respect that the person has. We have to be respectful, yes, because they were once living. Like you said, you know. Yeah. Absolutely, so they were we, once living. We have to be respectful, and they probably they are even seeking help. You never know, you know. They could be, uh, they could be stuck. And yeah, a lot of talk so. about people becoming trapped, and mm-hmm. they Absolutely. don't know that they're dead. They're dead. And yes. Yeah, so it's inter- very interesting to think about all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Do you mind uh, sharing any of your personal paranormal experience? As in, I mean, if it's not really personal? No, uh... for sure. So the first, uh, I would say, paranormal experience that I had that I really has resonated with me and kind of pushed me out onto this journey was shortly after I moved to San Francisco. We moved into an old house, an old a typical Victorian house for SF, uh, built in the late 1800s and a couple of months into living there my parents came to visit so we said to them you guys have the bedroom we're going to sleep on the fold out couch sofa and we did and one night I woke up at about 3am and I looked down the hallway of our apartment and I saw a little girl standing there staring at me and oh. I didn't feel scared or anything and I mean, it's odd. We didn't have any kids that should be in my apartment at 3 a.m. But I rubbed my eyes and then when I opened them back again, it was as if a light had been turned off so she was gone. She had just disappeared. And there were a few strange things about that apartment that would happen from time to time. And the thing that is most validating about that experience was uh, a couple of years later, when I came back to Australia, I hadn't had any more experiences that vivid where I had actually seen the little girl, but we were talking to a relative who had come to visit and stayed in the apartment. And they said that it was a very random conversation how we got into it, but they actually said, oh, I saw the ghost of a little girl in your apartment. And the thing was that they were sitting on the couch, the exact same spot where I was, and they saw her in the hallway as well. like my my husband Jared I said to him you know when this happened I said I seen a little girl and he obviously was interested and was like tell me everything what does she look like and I wanted to be a little bit scientific about it so I was like no if you see her we need to compare notes and like you say what she looked like and I'll yeah. tell you what she looked like and the per- the other person who saw her could just describe her exactly, exactly oh. how I seen her so that was quite odd um and to this day, I'm like, was I still just like dreaming, like half awake and just in, you know, part of a dream or something? But that was very interesting. And then, you know, during our travels, I haven't had anything uh, quite so vivid. We, I've had a lot of, you know, spirit box responses, EVPs, odd noises, temperature fluctuations. And my most recent one was actually in India. We were at a uh, step well, uh, I think it's called the Chand Bowery. I would probably saying that. Agrisen ki Bowery, the Delhi one? It's not in Delhi, it's uh, Rajasthan somewhere. I think it's called Chand or Chad. Chand. Chand? It's the deepest one in the world. It's okay. really, okay. really beautiful. Chand one. is moon actually. In, uh, oh, in okay. The, yeah, Chand it, is moon. Yeah, maybe that, that is the one, but I, w- I was there and it was during the day. So it was, we were just plenty of people tourists and whatnot around and we were just doing some filming and of course I don't have my camera rolling but I was uh, filming or about to take a photo of this back section of the ruin Mm -hmm. and I seen a shadow walk past inside the viewfinder of my camera and I stopped and I actually I thought it was Jared my husband so I stopped and I yelled out and I was like Jared move or (laughs) like get out of my shot and he was like what I'm over here so I went back into this spot which was sort of roped off and there was no one there and it was just very odd. It couldn't, we tested uh, the light around us, like it couldn't have been a shadow coming from anywhere, but I mean, I don't have any proof to show that it happened because I, I didn't even think to record. I was just about to take a photo and I was, I said to Jared, get out of my shot. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, so I've had a few weird things okay. like that but I'm still waiting for that experience again. Um, What I would love to see would be like an apparition at the same time as someone else. Yeah, so So as investigators, we all actually wait. (laughs) Yes. See an apparition, yes. So, uh, um, Amy, uh, 
you have 40k subscribers on youtube and you are traveling the world so you could have documented your travel you know travel vlogs why particularly paranormal uh, like you know uh, finding a haunted location in a country is difficult as compared to other tourist spots i'm pretty sure of it so you are taking the other way around you are not going to the tourist places you are going to the places which is abandoned which is haunted and people generally stay away from why i mean why the paranormal in general so uh again to my story with uh this little girl in my apartment that really sparked something in me and it's i'm almost like addicted i'm sure you guys can okay. relate yeah. i'm almost addicted i want to see something and i want to experience something like that again being mm. a skeptical person and i have a university degree in psychology also wow. so oh, okay. i i have a lot of uh background knowledge about how our brains work and mm. when you see something like that it's hard to tell yourself it's oh it's just your perception playing with you and i go to all of these places and i'm i am a history buff as well particularly dark history so i like to learn all of that aspect right. about these places that i go to and i'm just looking for more experiences and i feel like what better way to blend my passion with travel to go to the supposed most haunted mm. places in the world and actually see if they live up to the hype and if there is something there that you know maybe i could prove something at least to myself but why not document it by writing oh, about right. experiences oh, okay. and take everyone along for the ride in a video that's you know? wonderful actually <laughs> blending travel uh, you know tra blending something that we you lo love to do along with paranormal is a perfect, real good perfect combination perfect blend, <laughs> i would say that so <clears throat> uh you have been in india for the last almost a month, a month. i think it's oh, about right. a month so it's been quite and a while you already went to rajasthan and uh so i started in delhi i right. went to agra because i had to see the taj mahal, mahal which is beautiful and then yeah jaipur and we did a, a few place haunted places in uh rajasthan we went down to uh surat and kota mm -hmm. and then um here to mumbai mm -hmm. so so i saw your video on the dumas beach, the dumas beach. yes yeah. <laughs> how was that experience anything uh Ah uh, so that was that was really cool. I have um a a very decent following. A lot of uh people from India are following me on YouTube and I know there's a lot of interest in paranormal here and uh Bangad Fort and Dumas Beach were ones that were just you know recommended to me so so much and particularly when people found out I was coming to India everyone wanted to make sure I highlighted those places and um, went to Dumas Beach and filmed and it was very exciting to be there and uh actually at the end of um as the sun was going down we got asked to leave the beach by we what we think were police uh not a hundred percent sure but they said the first guy came up to us and he said you guys need to leave there are many ghosts here it is very he said, haunted. Oh, he said that there are ghosts he, here he said this area right here which is when we didn't leave <laughs> we uh, came back to that very area there's a i don't know if the whole beach is haunted or a particular area but he said the area you are in right now there are many ghosts oh. he said it's uh you need to leave there's police up here and we were like, oh okay like we'll leave so we started following him he was on like a quad bike so he kind of left then he came back a bit later with a guy who had another quad bike. He looked more uniformed up and he had flashing blue lights on his bike. Mm -hmm. He also said you guys need to hurry, you need to get off the beach. So there seemed some urgency there and almost fear get off the beach, it's haunted, you're not supposed to be here kind of thing. So we were like, yeah, 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 they were literally clearing everyone off the beach and we kind of went and hid in a bush for about an hour because <laughs> I come all the way to India, everyone wants me to investigate Dumas Beach and so do I and I had to just go out there at night because yeah. there's so many stories of paranormal occurrences and people sighting things or hearing things that it was just a very interesting place that I wanted to suss out. And... Uh, we were just talking about this a bit earlier off of um, the speaker, but the strangest thing that happened to us there, unfortunately didn't get on camera, which is always seems to be the way, but there were these strange flashes of light that lit up the entire sky and they weren't 
accompanied uh, by sound or clouds. We really weren't sure, sure what they were. Um, and one happened, so we started rolling. We're like, what was that? I'm still not really sure what it could have been. And then maybe 10 or 15 minutes again, later we seen another one. So it was just like the entire sky flashed with light and then went dim, almost like a lightning strike, but there was no visible lightning anywhere and no, no clouds, sound, no, okay. no, no clouds mm -hmm. accompanying it. There is an airport quite nearby and we're not sure if it came from that or maybe it was okay. a spark from the electric cables electric. hanging over the beach. Mm -hmm. But um, it was it was really cool to go and be on the beach and I think it made it more exciting that we were asked to leave <laughs> <laughs> in the end. But yeah, it was a very interesting uh, location to check out. Mm -hmm. okay. So uh, your video, the most famous one, I will say the nun one. Oh, for it sure. Has, like, <laughs> uh, the stats are right in front of me and it is already on 2.1 million views. Yeah, that one went crazy. That Please really... explain the feeling you have right now. <laughs> <laughs> 2.1 million. I know. Uh, it's, I, it's a huge number. It's, it's insane to think that that many people watched a video and looked at my face on the <laughs> internet. Um, but it, it was also great. It got me a lot of exposure to people who are interested in the paranormal, who are interested in travel, spooky places, and just what I do. So that definitely gave my channel a really good kickstart mm. to grow because before um, I posted that nun video, I had 800 subscribers right. and that had taken me about six months to grow. And I was very happy with that. I, I was like, wow, 800 people were following me mm -hmm. and watching these videos that I create. Mm -hmm. And then it was just insane for this video to come along and take off like that. But what was also cool about it was, I mean, the, the Conjuring film franchise has a lot of fans and the nun in particular, people were very interested to know the true story mm. behind it mm. because all of the other films in the franchise did have that strong backstory. Back, backstory. And then you get to the nun and it kind of didn't. It's uh, based on this uh, demon that actually exists in mythology, but its uh, ties to truth are very limited with the movie. But... What I did find was, coincidentally, I was going to be in Romania anyway to film for uh, Octo October in the lead up to Halloween. That was one of my big travel destinations I've always wanted to visit was Romania. Yeah. And somehow I just stumbled across that the abbey that features in the Nun movie, the name of it is actually a real place. None of the, none of the filming was done there, but it's a real place and it has real ghost stories okay. and that place was very remote we went there and I, I would be very surprised if there are other youtubers that have gone there to make vlogs because it was very hard to get to so it was cool to bring that aspect um to people that were interested in it and say hey mm -hmm. there is a little bit of truth behind it uh it's not exactly what you see in the movie but here's what I found and what I know and I managed to explore this place so I don't know, it was just very exciting to share that and have people respond so well to it and it was crazy. <laughs> used to have some, something. Yeah, so uh, like you said that, uh, for example, this uh, the place where the nun story basically originated from. You have been traveling such places from a long time. And so uh, do you believe in vibes, good vibes and bad vibes? I'm pretty sure you must be believing in them. Or um, I... I have this weird thing. I, I know that people say they're sensitive. Some people mm. say they're sensitive to the paranormal. And I feel if that exists that I'm not sensitive to it. And I don't know if it's just how my brain works. And I try to think everything through logically. Okay. I do know when I go to some places, I can feel more scared. But I also attribute that to... Uh, just basic fear responses where, okay, I'm sleeping in a sleeping bag with no protective barrier around me, not even a tent in a place where, I mean, not only ghosts have been sighted, but bears, <laughs> wow. you know, so that scares me. And then I will 
maybe it's just that fear response that makes me feel like, oh my God, this place is really scary. This is intense here. Yeah. Or if uh, I'm always more scared of the living than the of the ghost. So <laughs> if there's, you know, some sketchy people hanging around, then that definitely heightens a place and makes it feel like it could be negative or dangerous. And maybe it, that comes across with how people say, oh my gosh, this place is so haunted. Mm. Maybe okay. it's just because it seems scary. Mm. But I, I don't know, the more I go through life, I feel like you kind of get back what you put out. So this, my new year's resolution this year was to be more positive. Mm. So hopefully <laughs> this whole energy thing has, you know, some truth to it and I can get back some more positive positivity if I put more out, if that makes sense. So yeah. I think that is what is needed right now. Oh, uh, for sure. <laughs> so you've been to Japan now? I haven't been to Japan. A lot of um, a lot of people keep asking me to go there, particularly uh, the so sui guys, suicide sorry, forest. Yes. And I feel like that would be a very interesting place to visit. I know particularly when I went to Hoyabachu, which is Romania's big haunted forest, yeah. I had a lot of people say, oh, that forest has nothing on the suicide forest or you should go there and i i feel like that would be a very interesting place uh, to go to and understand a lot of uh my travel i like to understand places via the culture okay. maybe the religion and i think that that's very important for to move the paranormal field forward mm -hmm. and I do feel like there are things here in India, even in fact, that are a bit different. Like there's the whole belief in jinns and mm -hmm. I, yeah. yeah. So I've learned a lot about that being here, which is very interesting. You see the similarities and contrast between these cultures and the paranormal. But Japan, I, I feel I would really like to understand the mentality of, you know, suicide and that forest and how it all relates in um to the paranormal yeah. as well whether it's it's just a really i don't know i feel like it would be a very sombering place to visit actually so and i would like to understand it with my background in psychology mm -hmm. from that perspective absolutely. as much as the paranormal oh, yes, so absolutely but is, is japan somewhere that you guys are, are interested in but you know i've seen videos uh, the exploration videos and some people have also investigated the place yeah and so again i'm not a sensitive um i sort of keep my sensitivity away when I i'm am. investigating so oh, she's okay. a sensitive. I am. yeah absolutely she gets affected and so the vibes of those places even if i look at the pics they are oh i mean i was like we have to visit this place yeah absolutely and another thing as you said you know the psychology of the people japan is i mean the people of japan they are very calm and you know um they lead a very uh, according to the statistics of the entire they, it's a very calm and uh, uh, simple living mm -hmm. and what actually pushes them to commit suicide that you know they have a suicide forest and where there are actually people committing suicide on a regular basis so that oh, is every something minute. Uh, yes, I mean, what is committing. exactly drawing them to to that suicide. one place? Yeah, yes. because I also feel like it's uh, taboo. I mean, it, even in Western culture, talking about suicide and a lot it of is, um, a lot is. of mental health is just taboo, and mm -hmm. a lot of it's also misunderstood as well. I I feel so, and there's also some I guess stigma around the globe with it. Um, in San Francisco where I lived for three years a lot of people don't know this and it's largely hidden and not talking talking about but the uh, Golden Gate Bridge this beautiful landmark that everyone knows the Golden Gate Bridge oh, right yeah it's um it is a huge place for suicides yeah. and they estimate one at least one a fortnight and a lot that would uh you know a lot of people who would jump yes. and in fact the other day i think we were having a talk about that uh person who kevin the only, Hart. The only kevin person, Hart, sorry the name is kevin kevin Hart is a different actor in total uh -huh. uh, the only kevin. person who actually survived uh jumping off the bridge uh -huh. so he runs a foundation to prevent suicide and everything so yeah. he is a suicide victim in a way that he went to the bridge mm -hmm. he jumped off and he was sharing his experience and he says that the moment i you know i left the contact with the bridge 
And in mid air, he was like, he regretted what have it. I done? Like, yeah. what have I, I, I done? think he's actually great and he's doing a lot of talking about it, which is yes. the best then thing. And the absolutely. It it's, he uh, is helping people, uh, like, you know, the counseling them. Yeah. And he's doing an awesome job. So I think he was the only one who actually survived jumping off that bridge. Kevin Hines. Kevin yeah. Hines. Hines, yeah, yeah I, I've heard some of his uh, almost like motivational speaking. Yeah, I, I don't know if that's the correct term for it, but he is, yeah, great. And it's allowing people to feel more comfortable talking openly about it and, yes. you know, pushes them to seek help rather but than still, do something so drastic. That, that is needed, you know, it is a much But needed what I term. still don't get uh, from Japan is that uh, the, Japan, uh, the Japanese government is pretty aware of the suicides being... You know, conducted in the forest. But if you, from the recent videos that I have seen, there is no restriction to enter the forest. You can enter at any point of the day. Yeah. And there is no security. There is no cameras. I believe there is, there is nothing. Warning. Absolutely. Like so why the government isn't taking any kind of uh, steps to prevent or at least restrict the people uh, in entering the place? Because what I believe is, you know, um, coming to the vibes again, when uh, a place is so much. Uh, how do you say it? it's, it's a place where people have committed suicide and there are thousands of suicides happening every single day in Japan in that very forest. So the energies they might be releasing while dying, you know, that pain of depression, uh, anxiety and everything, I believe is going to affect the people, those are going to go around it. Mm. Definitely, because so many people, you know, mass suicide have happening there. The vibes are, you know, of sheer depression and sadness. And it's not paranormal. You are into psychology. Uh, you know, yeah. this very thing that if your husband is not happy, there's no chance that you are going to sit near him and be happy. You know, his energy is going to affect you some way or the other. You are... Your mood is going to go off. You might get pissed off or something like that. His energy is going to affect some way or the other. And it is very common if there are two best friends if one is happy, the other has to be happy, even if he's sad inside, because the energy is of more of a happier way. Right. But if things like this are, are like this are happening, I believe the government should be taking some step. But uh, what we can do, we can just spread, you know, the right message, yeah. and that's the most we can do and right yeah, now. Yeah, maybe help people in some way, like you know, especially those who are drawn to commit suicide. So we are also into counseling people uh, in the organization. So people come. So there is a very common phenomena here in India, uh, black magic. Oh, okay. Yeah. So it's very common. Um, many people term witchcraft in the foreign countries in like in the US and Europe. But in India, people like to call it as black magic. And it is, uh, it's a very common belief people have that if they are suffering financially, relationship wise or something is preventing them to grow any kind of block basically yeah. in whether it's finances or uh, relationships or anything it's just even if the person is not growing fully they consider that someone has performed black magic on them so that's very uh, and it's and you know in india it's very easy to say that and there you will easily find people who are going to loot you and exploit you by using that very term because yeah, it's it just is, a term that creates fear basically even if it's not there, I mean, it need not be there, but it's just the term that actually uh, creates fear. So we are into counseling and helping out those people to understand that, you know, nothing has happened. It is just your psychology or it is just you have been going through a bad phrase, basically. So just accept it and try to make plans. So that is what also we do. And also we get suicidal calls from yeah. people and we make sure that we're helping them out, even if it is midnight or any point of the day. We make sure I remember a girl, she, she was very suicidal when she contacted me and it took me a year to help her come out from that very phase and now she is glad that she has a life. So yeah, so yeah. anyone hearing this, like, you know, if you know of anyone who has suicidal tendency or is depressed, please take help because this is definitely not the solution. Yeah. So, uh, Amy, coming back to India, what plans do you have in India? Now, after <sighs> investigating Dumas and uh, other places that you have explored by now, what plans do you have? So, I feel like we've done uh, quite a bit of our exploring now and we're looking, do we leave India? Do we stay and try and see a few more places in Mumbai? 
Uh, there's a, a church in Goa. Yeah, and Three Kings Church. Yes, you know, <laughs> of mm. course, um, that we're thinking maybe that's a place that we could go to. Um, but yeah, we, we've done quite a lot. So Dumas is the only one that I've publicly released at this point. But I do have a backlog of places from um, America, Europe, even, mm. you know, uh, South America. Uh, a whole lot of places that I've filmed for or I have photos to write about, but I just haven't gotten around to it. So my backlog is also a bit of a mess. So, I mean, I posted my Dumas Beach video and then just today, which was my follow up video to that was one that was back in Poland. So mm -hmm. people are like, what? You were just in India and now you're back in Europe. But that's not the case. It's just all of these places that I've preempted and pre-filmed and saved my photos, footage, and no, knowledge no, no, about. The so, of Amy, so don't <laughs> stop her. She's in your country. <laughs> so there is, yeah, a lot going on. But for India, yeah, we filmed a whole bunch of places. We've got those uh, step wells uh, to come. We've got uh, Bangads, a really big one. Mm -hmm, we uh, yeah, I'd probably say it very poorly. <laughs> um, we stayed at a in Kota there. Oh, I'm blanking on the name, but it was a haunted palace, and now it's been renovated into a hotel. And oh yes, uh, I'm not getting the name, but uh... it's it's a very posh hotel, and there's a. Um, a family that's living in it who are very important and mm -hmm. you stay there and you can go through the bit of the palace it's it's a hotel right now yeah yeah so you can actually spend the night there and we did that did a bit of investigating there so i'll have a video out about that in the future as well so it's bridge raj bhavan bridge palace raj. yes yeah. yes that's okay. the one okay it is a beautiful place as well. Um, it overlooks. So you stayed the, overnight and did yeah, the thing. we oh, we spent the night yeah, there and nice. we had to splurge to stay there because normally we stay because we, we travel so far. Mm. We stretch our budget, but every now and then there's a place that you just need to fork out a bit of money to get access to because it's just one of those ones where you're like, I need to go to that place. I need to see what it's about and check yeah. it out and investigate. So. Uh, for India, uh, we may still be here for a little while, but most of what we're going to see uh, for the moment is done. I think maybe we'll be in Thailand next. I was look looking at some flights okay. or something today. Okay. So, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, uh, you, yeah, you have investigated the rest of India and then you have also explored India. So what difference do you see in terms of the mindset here regarding the paranormal? Uh, the open mind people have in other countries as compared to India. A any views that you have compared that, oh, in Europe we have this, but in India it's totally different. Anything that you have marked, anything uh, very much specific that you would like to share? Um, one uh, difference that springs to mind, and I guess this is uh, the same for a lot of countries and cultures, and it can even boil down to uh, religion, religious beliefs and that as well. When we were in Delhi, we went to, uh, I, I feel like it was called Ferocia Kotla. It's an old fort. Ferocia Kotla. Mm. It has a, a temple in it. Mm. And every Thursday, uh, which is obviously when we went, people come there to worship the jinns that are said yeah, to yeah. reside oh. there. Yeah. Oh. And, you know, they give offerings, they burn the incense, and they actually write down their troubles um, on letters and they post that there and some of them even photocopy the same letter over and over and post it all around uh, the temple so we went there and people were very much they weren't closed off to us being there and us seeing what was going on I think they were interested that we were there but they're very uh, open to what they're doing and willing to be like oh this is what we're doing this is what's going on here Whereas I feel like in a lot of other countries, particularly Western countries, you wouldn't see that. And if someone was acting like that, um, it, it wouldn't be as shared and as common to, okay, you can go into this temple every Thursday night and see these people pinning up personal letters that you can actually read because they're just out to the, the public. And 
I also feel like the concept of gins is something quite uh, unique to this area of the world and maybe it could translate into similar um, uh, similar things in the Western world, such as shadow people. And yeah. I think understanding all of this a bit more can help us relate and be like, okay, there's all these similarities between humans and how they work, even though you're, you're so greatly divided and you have different cultures and beliefs, you are experiencing something that is very different, uh, very similar um, and you just interpret them in different ways. So I, I think seeing India and how open to believing in ghosts and uh, other beings and how open it is, is a little bit different to other places. And I'll always ask people, is this place haunted or have you seen anything? And I, I've also had this in India where people are like, no, 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 that's just silly. Like, that's, mm -hmm. it's not, it's not real. Or, um, but yeah, I feel like in India, people are a bit more open to the idea that it is real and there's something here and it's a bit more open um, than people willing to share that they believe in different Western cultures. So, okay. which is changing though. People are, yeah, yeah mm. people are getting more into it and more open and, you know, investigating it more, I guess myself included. So mm. yeah, very interesting to see the world and yeah it's really I, cool to be in india as yeah, well to I, see I, all I this very silly question which people ask us how different are the ghosts in the usa <laughs> different from <laughs> india <laughs> um i mean yeah Feel just free to give us <laughs> we are ready for it uh i guess it, it comes down to the person's perception and and how it yeah. works so maybe that's why India sees a ghost as a djinn and someone in America might think it's a sinister or a shadow person or, or something. So India has actually many versions. Yeah, there's many a lot versions. of different types of djinns yeah. uh, even. In Vaitari, yeah. yeah. And yeah. the djinn thing but particularly, uh, I believe and what we have heard from many of the research scholars basically, that uh, jinn is a religious uh, entity okay it's not very common because uh, in hinduism there is nothing as jinn yeah so jinn uh, jinn is mainly related to islam and you know and the ferusha kotla is basically um a, 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 an islam uh, heritage site basically yeah and that's why people are very much uh, in belief that they have got jinns out there but in Hinduism um, or in other religion, I'm not trying to specifically put my focus on religions, but um, uh, you know that jinns are uh, common in the rural areas a lot yeah. here in India, uh, and and they are not, and they are irrespectively believed by every religion, the jinns. Yeah. But the origin is from Islam. But every religion believes in jinns, and it is from the stories that they have heard, like the one you shared right and now. And passed on. And yeah. they have passed on to generations. So, yeah. yeah. But I guess similarities translate, and you said the white sari. Yes. I mean, in, yeah. in Western culture, they have lady in white. Yes. Yeah. So, here, yes. White yeah. sari, or sometimes it's the red uh, bright yeah. dress. Yeah. And yeah, so I, there are many versions. So I, I feel like there's a, a lot of similarities. So I wouldn't say they're, they're too different, I guess. And you know that, uh, why people uh, or why many people uh, claim a ghost to look white and everything? I'm so, not sure. <laughs> yeah, I'll share this thing. Uh, so there is, uh, you must be aware of Bangalore in the south. Mm -hmm. So uh, there is a college known as the Christ College. And some professors from the Department of Psychology and Parapsychology they researched on this very topic that why do people claim of seeing a ghost and the color is white. So they researched a lot and it, the belief, uh, ma what they found was that the belief mainly or, uh, originates from the belief of Hinduism that in Hinduism, not only in Hinduism, every single religion believes that white is the color of purity, of peace. And so we, many of the people here in Hinduism, they were white if a person dies because they are showing that you know everything sh should will be fine and to be peaceful they ask the spirit to be in peaceful uh, stage so that's why they were white 
and the reason why people see them in white because after the person dies when the soul now many people will also say you might have heard that a soul is very pure it is not uh, and the mind is impure the soul is pure you know many people say that so if the soul is pure that means it is something or somewhere related to the color of white so, so if yeah a depiction basically like, yeah you know, so what like white people, depicting yeah. the uh, the purity and again the stories the yeah so how it came in was that suppose like we are just discussing that the stories are getting passed on to generations so some way you know some centuries back might be a person who might have researched that okay this person died and because he was a very pure soul so he might be looking white now and he passed on the stories now because we have it in the mind that the ghosts they look white so we are going to see a ghost who is looking white or is in white so that is what they concluded from the research uh, the scholars or not the scholars but the professors from the department of parapsychology yeah you that's that. interesting and to think about all that stuff and yeah. how, how these stories grow and get passed down and yeah mm. and when the lady in white is very famous out there and we have the lady in white sari famous here and uh, now the ghost applications being used so widely that the same lady appears in every single photograph you could <laughs> it's just the same ghosts getting around yeah. just <laughs> it's a popular one all right so i think it's uh, yeah. that's it so for that is it. the next part will come down when we are coming to australia <laughs> yes please yeah. do so come you guys are welcome <laughs> <laughs> we have we have um, Okay, I mean, so uh, you have anything to give shout out to any person or your Instagram handle, YouTube channel? You can please go ahead and do that. Oh, so if anyone's interested, you can find me on uh, YouTube. So youtube.com forward slash Amy's Crypt. I also have a website which is Amy's Crypt.com and my social media handles, so Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, are all at Amy's Crypt. So pretty easy to track down if you remember that <laughs> but thank you guys for having me on this has been thank a really cool all. and thank interesting you talk so much for coming amy and uh, thank you everyone for tuning in so this is it for uh, this episode and you can find us on uh, youtube and soundcloud and itunes and yes if you have liked this episode then do not forget to hit a like do share and subscribe and we will be back with a brand new episode until then bye 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 <laughs>